Hello everybody, this is Raspberry Barrel and we're back at it again to read another biography of Muni. And today we're going to be starting a new person to be featured on this channel, Fan Lover Stars New on D DeviantArt. And just giving you all a slight little update, for a bit of this summer, videos will be like this, pre-recorded and kind of just read out, not streaming, not using the VTuber model, but we will return to that shortly. Have no fear. Okay, let's dive right into this biography. I'm very excited to start this new series. And this series does take place in the Jig Zero 109 universe, but again, we do not support Jig Zero 109. And the creator has spoken with me that they know they do not support him either. Cassiopeia, the Enlightened. Light, bright, warm light, a soft ray fell on her and hope, and a blessing from heaven, he gave the Enlightened Cassiopeia. And Cassipi has two tapestries. Here is the first one, and here is the second one. Cassipi Butterfly, the Enlightened. Born 8.50 a.m., died 9.20 a.m., was queen 8.76 a.m. to 900 a.m., married to Sapphire Stone, children Libra Butterfly and Andromeda Butterfly. At dawn on the 18th day of Dragonette in 8.50 a.m., when the sun was just rising from the horizon, Queen Star Butterfly gave birth to a girl with hair the color of the morning sky, light pink eyes and eight pointed stars on her cheeks, naming her Cassipi. When her father, King Marco, took her into his arms, a ray of light illuminated the princess. Those present at the time of the birth considered that a good omen for, a brilliant, for a, the brilliant reign of the future queen. The circumstances of Cassiopeia's births are one of the greatest mysteries in the history of the Butterfly Dynasty. Among the many versions of the specifics of her birth, two are the most popular. The first one was put forward based on the result of a magical examination and historical and genetic analysis conducted by the Magical High Commission with my direct participation. It is the main one. According to her, the birth of Cassiopeia as the Day Queen is associated with the release of the magical radiation that occurred during the War of the Worlds, which influenced the change in the physiology of the members of the Butterfly Dynasty. The second version is a more poetic. She connects her birth with the nature of the reign of Her Majesty Queen Star the Rebel, who broke the order that had existed for centuries. As a child, her parents called Cassiopeia the little chaos of the castle. Everything that the princess touched immediately broke, broke and fell. Because of this, many were afraid of becoming victims of the clumsiness of the princess. Lady Rosalinda Flowers wrote, Her Majesty was playing with rosewood in the garden when she suddenly tripped over a tree root and fell right into the rose bushes. The princess spent the next two weeks completely wrapped in bandages and the wounds and scratches left by the thorns, although not so significant, it definitely caused Her Highness some inconvenience. In 8.54 a.m., during a joint visit to the Firefly Library with her mother, Cassipi played tag with, the, with Grace Firefly, dropped a candlestick, which led to a second grandiose fire. We can find out the details directly from Her Majesty's diary. My little Miss Bad Luck has brought trouble on us again. The fire from the candle she dropped passed through the curtains onto the bookcases. After evacuating my princess, as well as the Firefly family and the maintenance staff, I directed all of my efforts to save the books. I managed to save the collection of Queen Hermera the Builder. Unfortunately, for, or fortunately, some of the records of the queens of the Dark Ages were burned, to, burned in the fire. My baby was very upset, but I don't blame her because she's still a child. The following week, during a meeting of the mo of the royal council, while my mother was discussing with the ministers the issues of allocating funds for the reconstruction of the burning wing in the Firefly Library, another incident occurred. The princess, running to her mother, crashed into a closet, which staggered and began to fall on her. Fortunately, she managed to run away. I hugged my sonny tightly to my chest, but 
she freed herself, went to the fallen closet, and straining, used magic. Waving her arms, she picked, she picked him up, and all the books scattered around. Spinning in a whirlwind, Cassie herself soared up. Her eyes shone with a white light, and spreading her arms to the sides, she returned the books to their place. Everyone in the room at that moment, including me, was amazed by this. The amazing magical abilities of the princess was, were related to her hybrid nature. As a child of a human and a human, Cassipi possessed the unique nature of magic. Her power was a stream of light's light. Speaking on this, you can immediately recall Queen Helia the Light of Power, whose magic also resembled the sun. Contrary to popular belief, Cassipi didn't study at Elfendor. Noticing the enormous potential and inner untapped energy of the princess, Queen Mother Moon took her under her wing to teach her everything she knew, not without my help, of course. It's worth clarifying that Casapia was a very smart princess. She studied directly, diligently, and knew the high and low median languages perfectly. In addition, the princess took piano lessons from the court musician Ruberiot, vocal, read a lot, attended meetings of the royal council, and studied etiquette. In 856 AM, she was even honored to speak at the opening of the spring tournament, which won the love of the audience and the royal families of the kingdoms. In 860 AM, at her lonely star ball, after dancing with King Marco Diaz, Casapi met with the son of one of the generals of the Munian army, Sapphire Stone. The boy was shy, but very sweet and kind, and the princess liked him, so she chose him as her waltz partner for the rest of the evening. Immediately after this event, Cassipi began to keep her diary. Her first record is important not only because it reveals her character, but also because their friendship began from that moment. Sapphire is an incredibly charming and attractive young man. He spun me around in the dance, and to be honest, at some point I forgot that I wasn't in a dream, and almost fell right into the middle of the ballroom. I was so ashamed that he could become a victim of my daydreaming. After the ball, Cassipi skillfully alternated communication with Sapphire, her classes with Grandmother Moon and other duties. However, this was the case until 8.63 a.m., when during one of her lessons, she learned from the Queen Mother that she had engaged her to the young Lord Daniel Cross. The princess burst into tears and ran to her room shutting herself in there for a whole day and not seeing anyone. When Queen Star found out about what happened, she was furious. My daughter is free to decide her own fate, as I did at the time, Mom, she said, and, and no one, not even me, ordered her. The engagement was terminated. A month later, she issued a decree of a decree on arranged marriages, which prohibited them without poor acquaintance and the interest of both parties in the union. The decree became widely known among the people, gaining the glory of long-awaited freedom. In 864, on her 14th birthday, Cassipi revealed a family received a family magic wand, which acquired a standard appearance, and only an elongated handle distinguished it from the standard one. It is worth noting that as soon as the princess took the wand into her hands, the rays of the sun fell on her from the window into the throne room where the ceremony took place. The ceremony took place early in the morning in a thunderstorm. The phenomena, which had already happened to her at the time of her birth, was considered by everyone to be a sign from another blessing from the goddess. That evening, Casapi reconciled with her grandmother, whose lessons she stopped immediately after the termination of the engagement. The princess wrote in her diary, I love Grandma Moon very much, and I can't take offense at her anymore. Six months have passed since that moment. She wanted only the best for me, and I respect and love her for that. Cassipi's Wand In the following year of 865 AM, Queen Mother Moon died and was buried in the crypts of the Butterfly Castle next to Skye's mother and Aunt Comet. Queen Star suffered the death of her mother very hard and mourned for her for a long time, continuing to live solely for the sake of her daughter, who was still too young and supported her mother throughout the mourning period. In a conversation with Lady Juniper Forest, Lord Falcon Redbird commented, Her Highness became her mother's shadow, 
Wherever Queen Star went, she followed her. At any moment, she was ready to pick her up, to help her cope with the sudden rush of emotions. This girl has more stamina than, than any other princess. In 866 AM, they held a spring tournament. The princess took part in a chess competition and, beating all rivals, took first place. Before her, no princess who showed interest in the tournament had ever managed to reach even the semi-finals. Mainly, everyone remembered the exact moment of the award presentation, when the heiress was once again illuminated by a ray of sunshine. Wherever the light of the sun falls on me, it seems to me that the goddess is smiling at me, so I can't help smiling. It wouldn't be polite to her. Maybe she wants me, wants to tell me something with this. However, I still don't understand how to interpret it. Casapi soon also had a younger sister and brother, Princess Serenity, born in 867 with brown hair and brown eyes, with dark skin like her father, with yellow semicircles on her cheeks, and Prince Purr, born as, born as an exact copy of Queen Star two years later, in 869. The royal princess loved them very much and often played with them in her free time. When it comes to Cassipi's magical training, I usually immediately mention that she is able she is an able student with the highest data, which is explained by her hybrid nature. Cassipi is the creator of spells such as Shamamile, Pacification, Return of Memory, and Evelet Spell. Speaking of the latter, the idea for its creation came from Cassipi shortly after, during one of the meetings in the bureaucracy of magic, Romulus complained to the queen to Queen Star that the place for dangerous criminals in the crystal dimension was running out and that he wouldn't be able to keep new criminals under control. Then the princess came to me with a little help, which consisted mainly of giving a couple of ups of tips. She created a pocket dimension called an intertemporal. It was there that all the particularly dangerous criminals were exiled in the future. But Cassipi's main achievement in magic is far from that. In 869 AM, an epidemic of purple smallpox began on Muni, which, from which King Father River and King Marco died. Despite Queen Star's desperate attempts to deal with the situation, the pandemic didn't stop, gaining momentum and spreading across the continent. Then the princess of the, of decided to take it under her, her personal control and try to look not at the consequences of the disease, but at its root. Soon she found out that the pandemic came from a dimension inhabited by cats with human faces. Then Caspi went there to ask how they were fighting the disease. She returned three days later with a stack of various books and begins to study them. We can learn more about this from her personal diary. I don't have time to mourn for my deceased grandfather and father. All my thoughts are just busy trying to find a cure for this scourge. I know that all illnesses and troubles are trials sent by the goddess for us from above. However, it's extremely difficult for me to watch citizens die. I don't want anyone else to lose their loved ones because of this disease. After a long time, she introduced a spell that had been preserved in history under the name Healing Light. One of the maids described how it works in her report. It was a dark, gloomy night. I was mopping the floors in the hallway when suddenly the rays of the sun penetrated through the window panels and began to warm everything around. Although there was still a lot of time before dawn, the light grew brighter and brighter and the air seemed to heat up. I managed to close my eyes before there was a flash, the shock wave of which threw me several meters to the side. When I woke up, I felt that even the air seemed to have become different more pleasant, and the clouds that had been covering the moons of Muni had disappeared from the sky. In the morning, when I went to the city, everyone was walking as if nothing had happened, including those who hadn't hoped to live until the morning. Yesterday. The purple smallpox pandemic officially ended with the release of, this, of the decree of Queen Star, in which she expressed gratitude to her daughter for her help, for which she subsequently, the people began to call the princess the Enlightened. The period from 870 to 875 is distinguished by historians as the phase of the most active development of relations between Caspi and Sapphire. In 872 AM, the couple officially announced their relationship and went on a three-year tour of other countries. They traveled along the route of wonders.
of the of the Queen Diana the Huntress and King Tilford, visiting many different places, Paradisea and the Candy Dimension, where they contributed to the end of another war between Duke Marmalado and Queen Licorice, the Red Forest of the Maple Kingdom, Laurel and Sylvian. They also visited the Septeria and the Avaria with diplomatic visits, strengthening friendly relations between the Mumins and the Monster Nations. In 876 AM, Queen Star abdicated the throne in favor of Cassipi. After the coronation ceremony, which took place in the Great Celestrium of Muni, at which, and at which, when the crown of St. Urena was placed on her head, it shone like a second sun, dazzling all guests with its brilliance. The Queen Mother left Muni together with Princess Serenity and Prince Pier. They went to the shores of the Delphin Day Sea to finally rest after a difficult reign crowned with many cries and challenge, crises and challenges. Caspi let the family go with a calm heart and maintained correspondence throughout the voyage during the vacation. During this vacation, they visited the Wavering Kingdom, reinforcing the allied relations between the states with gifts from the new monarch butterfly. Caspi's Crown Caspi began her reign by taking decisive measures in foreign policy to wash away the image of the culprit of the war of worlds from the kingdom. Caspi, as a sign of goodwill, sent festive gold sets to all the kingdoms of Muni and beyond the continent. They were created in honor of her accession to the throne and enchanted by her in a special way, allowing everyone who used them to be cured of diseases. The diplomatic gesture had has noticeably improved relations between the Butterfly Kingdom and the other states, especially with the United Kingdoms. The next step taken by the Queen was the beginning of the payment of the Great Debt. A separate item of expenditure of the Royal Treasury was created, which provided for the re redistribution of Crown revenues and return of one-third of all of its profits to the kingdoms affected by the war. This not only leveled the negative image of the kingdom, but also restored trust and relations between the countries. The internal policy of the crown has also changed. Caspi had updated the a composition of the royal council, Lords Godric Redbird and Daniel Cross, and Ladies Rosewood Flowers, Citrina Stone, and Maple Forest have become new ministers. A fresh look from the younger generation at the internal politics of the kingdom in collaboration with other lords and ladies, allowed Caspi to carry out economic reform. These transformations stabilized the exchange rate of the Golden Sun, which had been falling for many years, by increasing interest rates of loans and borrowings. They also reduced the amount of money in circulation, which led to the reevaluation of the nat national currency. Caspi introduced a state monopoly on alcoholic beverages. From now on, they were, they were supplied to pubs in more limited qualities than before. Now all the goods have been checked for quality according to the standards set by Queen Caspi herself. This reduced the number of alcohol poisoning cases by, by half in the following decades. Social policy had acquired has acquired new dimensions. In addition to expanding the financial aid program for widows and single mothers created by Queen Crescenta the Eager, she also ca carried out pension reform. Now socially vulnerable segments of the population, pensioners, children, the disabled, veterans of the War of Worlds, and others, received a stable pension with an annual indexation of 5.5%. Naturally, the increase in the number of social benefits has led to the acute question of where to get funds to finance these programs. Then the queen turned to Lady Citrina Stone. Your precious minds are a miracle of nature and your wealth. I need you to find and start developing new deposits of precious metals and stones, raising the state banner over them. Three months later, Cassidy visited the very first new golden mo gold mine and officially opened it. The gold obtained from mining from it went not only to pay promised pensions and benefits, but also additionally to, to deductions far from the great debt, deductions for the great debt. In the same year, Queen Mother Star, Princess Serenity, and Prince Pierre returned from their trip. 
The mother held up a special bronze coral to Cassidy. It will remind you of me and my boundless love for you and your sister and brother, Star said, to which she received a portion of hugs from her daughter. The next day at dinner, the revel felt unwell and retired for two chambers, but came down with an unknown ailment. Before her death, the Queen Mother blessed the marriage of Cassiope and Sapphire. The Queen urgently organized a wedding ceremony in the Great Celestrum, where they were married at the end of 876. Star Butterfly died three days later in her sleep and was buried next to Grandma Sky in the crypts of the Butterfly Castle. Cassiope decorated her mother's coffin with, a gold, with gold stars and ordered a monument to be erected in her honor, which still stands on the compromised, on the compromised square. Cassipi spent the entire period of the royal mourning in her room in the Queen's Tower, meditating and not eating. When King Sapphire finally sounded the alarm, after two weeks, the Queen left and returned to her duties. We can learn about what she was doing all this time from Cassipi's diary. All 14 days of mourning, I couldn't eat. My body rejected food. I lived with memories of how I spent time with Mom and Dad, missed my carefree childhood, lessons with Grandma Moon and Grandpa Rivers camp. They left me so early, and I had to pull myself together to return to running the kingdom. In 877, Cassipi found out that she was expecting a child, and nine months later, Princess Libra was born, with golden wheat hair and aquamarine eyes like her father's, with double triangles on her cheeks. In honor of this event, Cassipi ordered the creation of a crown for her from a gift brought, brought by her mother. The court jeweler created a real masterpiece, giving the shapeless bronze coral the appearance of a tiara similar to the crown of St. Urena. Cassipi wrote the following in her diary, Lord Zircon has surpassed himself. I have never seen anything more beautiful, at the same time simple and so dear, than this crown. I never would have thought the coral could be so strong, just like my mom's love. In 880, a series of events began the historians have characterized as the three great challenges of Cassipi. It all started with the fact that popular uprising began in one of the small towns of the Butterfly Kingdom. Mon on Muni stopped paying taxes and declared itself a republic. Vilsi Brock, the head of the local government, be became president. Cassipi, with the support of three legions of Muni army, moved towards Stoneheart. When Butterfly's troops crossed the mountain, which was located behind the destroyed city, they came together in battle with the rebels. The Battle of Stoneheart ended with the victory of Caspi's army and the capture of the president. After lawsuits caused by the particip participation of a huge number of citizens in the up uprising, Caspi ban banished Brock in the t intertemporal and and reduced taxes to the residents of Mon on Muni by two times for the period of, for, of three years to prevent the risk of a repeat uprising. In 8.85 a.m. had the second great challenge. Heading to the bedroom along one of the corridors of the palace, the queen came across a maid who disappeared into one of the secret rooms and followed her. After a passing through a narrow tunnel, she went on to the hall, out into the hall, where she hid behind a wall. There she managed to eavesdrop on the conversation between several cloaked figures. They made her horrified. A plot was being prepared to overthrow the Butterfly Dynasty and kill all its members. The Knights of the New Order, as they called themselves, were the descendants of the broken res resistance of Spitfire. Their goal was revenge on the Butterfly Dynasty for the massacre of their prince Matthias several centuries before. Cassipi started run running. She was almost overtaken by the enemy, but managed to hide in one of the rooms in time. The next day, at the meeting of the Royal Council, Cassipi announced the beginning of the, the persecution of the Knights of the New Order. The Queen said, They aren't only a threat to the autocratic government, but also to ordinary people. As the, member, as the murder of members of the royal family will lead to mass unrest, riots, and anarchy. The hunt for the members of the organization lasted for three years, from 8.85 to 8.87 a.m., inclusive and ended with the capture of its leader, Ladric Loris. Before being banished to the intertemporal, he said, Live and rejoice while you can, because our people will find you sooner or later. After that, a fear settled in Cassidy's heart, 
which he couldn't get rid of until her death. The following month, the queen found out that she was in a, in a position. The pregnancy wasn't easy, as it was complicated by Casapi's continued worries about the words of the conspirator. But thanks to the efforts of King Sapphire, who made every effort and took all of the responsibilities of, of a wife, in 887 a.m., a girl with sunset hair, pink eyes, and stars on her cheeks was born, who was given the name Andromeda. In 891 a.m., Casapi handed the wand to Princess Libra, and she took the form of golden scales, like the ancient Greek goddess of justice, Themis. The report of Caspi's friend and minister of education, Lady Gracia Firefly, reveals this event as this event a little more to us. Definitely, her majesty will show that true justice is in the future. The kingdom will be an example of justice, I'm sure. In 892 AM, Princess Serenity introduced Caspi to her fiance, who to the queen's surprise turned out to be her minister, Lord Daniel Cross. Despite the love shown between the partners, the sister's chose, chosen one didn't seem to have the same warm feelings for the queen and was more cold with her. I don't understand why Lord Daniel is so distant with me. Maybe it's my position that's to blame. I'm really uncomfortable in his presence. Serenity loves him, but his behavior makes me, makes me treat him with caution. The following month, their engagement was announced, and in 893, they were married. A few months later, the queen's sister gave birth to a son, naming him Richard. Two years later, the third challenge of Caspi's reign occurred, which changed her life forever. At the beginning of 894 a.m., the queen, following the unspoken tradition of her predecessors, put on peasants' clothes and a cloak, covered up the signs, and went to the city accompanied by her friend, Grace Firefly. As she passed the bulletin board, she noticed a decree hanging, written on behalf of King Regent Daniel. Soon, Caspi returned to the palace, where she immediately called a royal council and presented a leaflet to her son-in-law, to which he only grinned. The offended queen threatened to deprive him of his position if such a thing happened again, which only angered Lord Daniel, who, let the council hall, who left the council hall ahead of schedule with the words, whether it will happen again. That evening, Princess Libra and Queen Caspi received threatening letters. They acquired, required him to abdicate the throne both for himself and for his descendants, after which he left the kingdom peacefully, leaving all power to the council. The queen has ordered increased security in the palace. However, despite this, attempts were made on them under the cover of the night. We can learn the details of those events from the testimony of the head of the queen's guard, Lord Godric Redbird. Her majesty was attacked first. An assassin tried to stab her with a knife, but only hit the forearm of King Sapphire, who covered his wife and managed to stab him in the leg with a dagger, causing him to fall to the floor. When the surviving members of the Queen's Guard arrived, Princess Libra's screams were suddenly heard, and everyone rushed to help her highness. Already at the entrance to the chambers, we met the Magic High Commission. I rushed inside together, Having managed to immobilize the sent assassin, both subsequently named their customer. It turned out to be Lord Daniel Cross. Princess Libra escaped with only minor bruises and fright, while several gray strands appeared on Her Majesty's head. She hugged and comforted Her Highness for a long time after that, staying with her until the morning. Two weeks later, the bureaucracy of magic hosted one of the very first high-profile trials conducted by Libra as a prosecutor in the trial of Queen Caspi, the details of which will be consecrated in the biography of the next queen. I note that the man was stripped of all positions and titles and exiled by Queen Caspi in the intertemporal. The chair of the Minister of Health was taken by his younger sister, Liz Cross. One of the most dramatic events occurred on the same evening when Princess Serenity found out about it, who begged her to release her husband during that per entire period of his imprisonment. Serenity couldn't understand her sister and disowned her. I've never seen Cassie like this before, even when her parents and grandmother died, King Sapphire said in a dialogue with his sister and minister Lady Citrina. A month later, Serenity's son died of pneumonia, and she decided to become Astrine and go to serve in the Great Celestrum. Princess Serenity became popularly known as the Unfortunate One. 
The queen has become more closed and cold than she was before. The last years of Caspi's reign passed quietly in 8.95 a.m. Her daughter Libra introduced her fiancé, Sparrow Redbird. Caspi and Sapphire approved of their daughter's choice and announced their engagement the next day in the same year. Libra and Sparrow's wedding took place. The payments of the great debt gradually increased as the monetary policy that she developed at the beginning of her reign began to bear fruit. Despite heavy spending, the revenue side of the royal treasury increased due to the growth of corn exports, exceeded the expenditure. In 896, Caspi opened the royal orphanage. There, the poorest segments of the population could get a roof over their heads, three meals a day, and medical supplies. The queen personally attended the opening and served food to the peasants between 897 and 898. Several new schools were also open for both humans and monsters. The authority of Queen Gatsby among the people has become an unshakable postulate of the royal authority in Butterfly. In the year of 900 AM, a solemn celebration of Independence Day took place. During a reception for foreign monarchs and relatives, Caspi gave a speech in which she thanked everyone for their help in ruling. She especially singled out her daughter by abdicating the throne in her favor. The coronation ceremony secretly prepared by her mother was an unexpected surprise for Libra. The princess was crowned in the great celestrum that evening. I realized that I was no longer a young girl, young and ambitious, as young as ambitious as I used to be. It was time to give way to the one who really wanted to rule and was already ready for it. As for Sapphire and me, we decided to leave Muni and go live out our days on the, on the cottage of the Oyster Kingdom to the Delphin Day Sea, where my mother, my sister, and my brother used to come on vacation in happier times. Caspi left Muni for many years. All of this, all this time, the Queen Mother kept in touch with her daughter through a mirror and wrote letters sharing her life in the house of shore of Delphin Day Sea. The Queen Mother saw the birth of all of her grandchildren. Princess Amor in 901, Princess Planetia in 902, Princess Hyperion in 904, Princess Lumia in 905 AM. She also returned to Muni for a ceremony of handing over the wand to Princess Amor in 915 AM. In the evening of 9... 20 a.m. Caspi and Sapphire didn't get in touch with Queen Libra before she made a call on the mirror. Worried about this, she waited three days before going with guards to their cottage on the coast of the Oyster Kingdom. What was discovered shocked everyone. They were lying on the floor near the table and were dead, and there was a note next to them. The Knights of the New Order remember everything. And the bodies of Caspi and Sapphire Stone were brought home by their daughter, who, according to witnesses, sobbed loudly all the way. The official cause of death is poisoning caused by a lacrimose venom. Caspi was buried in the crypts of the Butterfly Castle next to her mother. During the inser insertion of the coffin into the crypts, a ray of sunlight illuminated it, marking the departure of the enlightened queen. Caspi and the Knights of the New Order in 8.85 a.m. And that was the biography of Caspi, the Enlightened, by Fan Lover Stars New on DeviantArt. A link to their page will be in the description. Please go check out the rest of their art and stuff. Thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed. These biographies, I think, are going to be a little longer than the other ones. I'll see you all next time and have a great rest of your day. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.